Well, good morning. Uh, I hope you like this transition here. <laughs> um, to all five of you watching, um, the technical difficulties this morning might be quite high. <laughs> um, Steve, I miss your brother. We have the our technical man, Steve, not here, obviously, with the restrictions going on uh, with the government. We want to be safe uh, rather than sorry, of course. And so this morning, uh, what I want to do is tell you the story that has changed my life forever. And that story impacted my life when I was 15 years old. It is the story of the good news. And before I get to that, um, let me just explain again how things are going to go. And again, we're going to change things up a little bit different again, probably each week, just because this is a, a new form of communication and we're hoping to learn and, and hopefully get better as we go on and as we do this uh, together. And so this morning, what I'm going to do is give a short talk from the Bible, start off like that. Then afterwards, I will pray and then following that, we will do a song. Now, somebody asked, could I grab my guitar out and, and do the song like that? Um, I am not going to grab my guitar out uh, this morning. I can assure you of that. But what we're going to try and do is maybe play a song um, through YouTube here uh, from Sovereign Grace. They've given us permission to do that. And so I'll pray and then we'll do the song. And as we do the song, that will give you an opportunity to respond to the message that you've heard. So leave us a comment as you're listening to the song. Um, maybe a scripture has come to mind as you're listening to the sermon. Maybe some thought has come to your mind as you've been listening out. And so as those thoughts come into your mind, just leave a comment. Um, let us know that you're listening. Let us know uh, where you're listening from again. That was really encouraging to see who people, who was watching and where they're watching from. And do say hi to one another as well. It's good to welcome one another at church, isn't it? So let's uh, say hi to one another. And again, as I've been told, there is a start button underneath me here, I think. Um, so click that and let's uh, share out this good news uh, with other people. So let me go back again to the good news story. The good news that changed my life when I was 15 years old. You see, I was going to church on Sundays. I was going in and going out. I was sitting up and sitting down. I was opening up the prayer book. I, I was saying all the prayers. And, and then as I was leaving, I lived my life however I wanted. I didn't live my life after the Lord. I wasn't following after him. I, did, I didn't cherish him. And it was one day, um, a friend of mine, this friend is probably watching here now. One day, a friend of mine, he invited me to this youth camp when I was 15 years of age. And it was there at this youth camp, somebody was speaking from the Bible and I knew, I knew that at that time God was calling me to follow after him. Not just out of route tradition or those kind of things, but actually give my life over to him. And the news that I heard at that camp was the good news of Jesus. And when I heard this good news, it changed my life forever. Now, 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 some of you watching here might be, might be Christians and you might be saying, oh, well, this is the easy stuff of Christianity, the good news, the gospel, so I don't need to listen. But I'm reminded in this of a quote from Timothy Keller. It's been said quite a few times. The gospel, the good news, is not the ABCs of Christianity. It is the A to Z of Christianity. This is our message. This is our message that we are to love and our message that we are to cherish and our message that we are to share out to this world. It is good news in a bad news time. And so let me ask you this. If I was to ask you, you know, um, what is the gospel? If I was to ask even the Christians watching here, what is the gospel? What is the good news? Many of you, I'm sure, would start um, at different places. Some of you would start uh, possibly with your story of how God changed you. Some of you would start maybe with Jesus on the cross. Some of you would start maybe with the resurrection. But I wonder where the best place to start is with this good news story. And the best place to start, of course, in any story is in the beginning. 
I don't know about you, but I love films. I like films. I enjoy them. And for some reason, I enjoy watching films in the cinema with loads of other people making noise. I don't know. I just like the atmosphere. But for me, I hate missing the start of any film. You know, some people that I'd go to films with, they're kind of casual, lazing around. I want to be in there 15 minutes before. Do you know why I want, want to be in there 15 minutes before? It's because I don't want to miss the most important part. Because it is in those scenes, you know, in those films where you see the, the camera is kind of panned out and maybe the main character is out of focus and slowly coming in towards the screen and slowly coming into more and more focus until you see her the main character of the story. And so it is with the Bible. If you're going to know the good news, you need to start at the beginning. You cannot miss it. And so in the Bible, I'm going to be reading loads of different verses this morning, so you can follow along as best as you can. Um, but in the Bible, it starts like this. Genesis 1.1 In the beginning, God... At the very beginning of all things, Genesis 1-1 tells us, in the beginning, God. Before there was a past, there was God. God is the eternal being. He was there in the beginning. And what did God do in the beginning? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So as we begin this good news story, we need to remember that God is our good creator. We have to start there. If we miss that bit, we miss all of it. God as our creator. And as you look around at this world, you must be amazed at God our creator. You know, I've never, never appreciated creation quite as much as I do right now. Okay, we are in total lockdown, aren't we? Two kilometers allowed outside of your home, right? And so what I've noticed and what I've appreciated so much about Passage West is that we have a walkway, this walkway alongside um, the water, and it's just a, a beautiful walkway that you can go along. And I've just enjoyed that place so much more now than I ever have before. As I breathe in the air, as I see the sea and the sky and the birds, I appreciate this creation. The creation, I believe, that is from God. And you see, it is in creation that God has revealed himself to us. Romans 1, 19 says this, For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it, has shown it to them. For his invisible qualities, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived even since the creation of the world. In the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. As you look at this creation, the creation of the world, what it says to us there in Romans 1, that even people who do not believe... Even people who reject God, even people who are unrighteous and, and suppress the truth of God, even God has made this truth of him clear to them. He has made it plain to them, the scripture says. He has made his, his invisible attributes, his qualities, he has made it plain and clear to people. And how? Not just by the pages of this book. He has made it clear to us by the pages of creation. You not only need to read this book to see God. If you read creation, you see God. And this is what we need to read today. I remember, I think I was about eight years old and I was going to my uncle's house in Canada. And so we were all taking a flight together. It was really a once in a lifetime uh, opportunity trip. And so we got onto the plane, we were, we were flying and the flight path takes you over Greenland. 
And as I was being flown over Greenland, even as an eight-year-old, I was able to peel my eyes off that rubbish little square screen in front of the seat in front of me and look out the the oval-shaped window to see something amazing. It was that night that I saw the Northern Lights for the very first time. You see, you have those simple moments when you see creation, you know, the the sky and the sea and all those. But then you also have these wow moments when you see creation. And those moments, they cause you in your heart to remember that moment from years back. And it's there that God is saying to us that he is there, that he is our creator. And so what I want you to do, I know this happens to all of us. When we see great wonders in this world, we are amazed by the wonders themselves. But what I always encourage people to do is look beyond the wonder of the creation and look to the creator. Ask yourself, is this nature that I am so bowled over by, is that all this is? Is it just simply nature? Or is there more to this? Is this creation? And does this creation reveal a creator? And it is my belief that yes, it reveals a creator to us. And not only did God create all that is around us, but God created us. Again, in the beginning of this book in the Bible, it makes that clear to us. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and subdue the earth and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves. You see, not only did God create the heavens, we, see, we hear that in Psalm 19 verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. And so not only do we see that the heavens declare his glory, but we also see in every single person the image of God. And with the image of God, there are two things that we need to remember when it comes to the image of God. When it comes to the image of God, there are two things. The first is there is a beauty in it. And the second is there is a a responsibility in it. First, we look at the beauty that is in the image of God. I don't know how some of you are feeling today, but you need to know something. You are beautifully made in the image of God. You are made by God, which means that you have value. You have worth. I know at this time when people are in, in isolation, kind of, kind of um, sad thoughts and, and morbid thoughts can get into our head. But if I could just speak to you for a second. This scripture tells you that you have value. You are beautifully made in the image of God. And you see, I know that all of us in this world, we recognize this truth even just a little bit, don't we? And I I know we recognize this truth. How? Because when we are looking at what is going on right now, the reason we are all in isolation right now is because we want to do what? We want to protect the most vulnerable in our society. We want to protect those who are elderly. We want to protect those with underlying illnesses. We want to protect the vulnerable right now. And so my question is, why would we want to protect people? Because we see that in those people, every single one of them, whether young or old, they have intrinsic value. And that value is that they were made in the image of our God. This is why we're in isolation, because we see people are made in the image of God. This is why on Thursday night, everybody in this nation started to clap. 
to all the people, all the nurses on, on the front line and doctors on the front line, we started to clap. Why? Because they are now our heroes. Because they are protecting human life made in the image of God. This is why, let me give you an example. This is why I believe that if there was a house on fire, and you were to run into that house and there was black smoke and as you ran into that house you'd be you'd be maybe crawling down to get away from the black smoke and as you you see that black smoke you you come into a room and you see in that room there is this cage over in the corner and in this cage there is this rabbit this pet rabbit that's in the house right and then in the other corner you have this cot and in that other corner in that cot or that crib is a baby And now you have a decision. Do you go and open the cage and get the rabbit or do you go to the cot and get the baby? Well, it seems almost foolish, doesn't it? Because of course, every time, every time, you would choose the baby. Now why? Because there is something intrinsically valuable about a human being made in the image of God. Now you might not put those words on it, but you know who you'd rescue. That doesn't mean that the the rabbit doesn't have value. Of course the rabbit has value because the rabbit has been made by God, but, but the rabbit doesn't have the image of God. Only the baby does. And we recognize the value of the image of God. I don't know where you were at this morning. But I want you to remember that. You are made in the image of God. And I don't only want you to remember that about yourself. I want you to remember that about other people. You see, if what I'm saying is true, that means every single person in society, every single human being has value and worth and is made in the image of God. And I am desperate that we as a nation do not forget that truth. And with that truth, not only is there a beauty that we are made in the image of God, but there is a responsibility that we are made in the image of God. We have a responsibility and that responsibility is to represent God in this world. We are to be his image bearers in this world. We are to rule and reign for him. That is what the first human beings were given. They were told to rule and reign for God over the animals and over the fish and over the birds, over every living creature. And the first human beings, they failed when they should have said no to the serpent. They said yes. And so we have a responsibility. Can I encourage you, you know, at this time in isolation again, it is tempting to forget about your responsibilities, right? Some of us are out of work right now, can't go into work, maybe can't work, and it's hard to keep up your responsibilities, maybe as a husband, as a wife, as a parent. But what I would ask you to do, maybe you're a Christian watching here, never forget in this moment your responsibility right now to represent God. This is our opportunity, This is our opportunity to tell people about him, the wonderful God that we know, the wonderful God who changed my life and maybe has changed yours. This is our moment to represent him, not just to flitter our lives away, watching Netflix and playing silly games on our phones. This is the time to tell people about our God. And so we are made in the image of God. He is our creator. But lastly, what we need to consider is this. You see, because some people would like to just leave it at that. God created the world. God created us. Yes, beautifully and wonderfully. Yes, we have responsibility. But God just left us at that. That's what people want to believe. That God has just left us in our position that we're in right now. And left the world alone and he's gone away now. That, that position is, is called deism. That God has just created the world and left us alone. I don't believe that to be true. 
Because we need to remember two things about God. The first thing we need to remember as we consider what God is like, there's much I could say about what God is like, but as we consider what God is like, the first thing I want you to know is that God is love. God is love. Listen to what it says in 1 John 4 verse 8. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. Let me just focus on the last three words of that verse. God is love. Now, when you hear that statement, God is love, I'm sure right now that there is a few people with, with various different feelings when you hear that word. God is love. Some of us right now watching this will, will hate that thought that God is love. And some of us right now watching this will love that thought that God is love. Ironically enough, we have a, a, a love-hate relationship with the idea that God is love. And the reason why some of you watching this might, might hate that idea that God is love is because of everything going on around us right now. Shane, you mean to tell me that your God is love? Really? Really? When all this is going on around the world, you want to tell me all the death and everything that's going around, you want to tell me that God is love? How could he have let all this happen? And you know, the frustration that you feel is a good and right frustration, not against God, but against all that goes on in this world, right? I mean, when we see death in this world, we should hate it. There's something in us that says the death that is happening in this world right now, there's something in us that says this is wrong. This is not right. This should not be happening. This should not be the way it is. And listen, my friend, you would be right in saying that. This should not be the way it is. And the reason it should not be the way this it is, is because God created the world perfect. He created a perfect people in a perfect world serving and loving him in a perfect relationship. And they had a perfect marriage. And God said in the garden, listen, you can eat of anything that you want in this garden, but I do not want you to eat of this one tree. And in so doing, God not only gave them choice, but God also allowed them experience the wonderful thing it is to be in complete obedience to their father. And of course, you and I know what happened. They took from that fruit. Listen, in Genesis 3, it says, So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he too ate. Here's what we see. They disobeyed the Lord. And from that moment on, from that moment that they disobeyed the Lord, physical death in entered into the world, spiritual death entered into the world. And let me put it this way to you, natural death entered into the world. This world went wrong, not because of God, but because of us as human beings. This is not right. And this is why we need the good news. Because the Lord God is going to set all this right one day. God is love. 
But then there's also some of us, not only who hate that, but also some of us who, who love that. Yes, of course, God is love. Of course, your God is love. That means all of us will get this free pass into heaven. No matter what we do, no matter what we say, some of us will believe that, okay, we're good. We get a free pass into heaven then because God is love. And if God is love, then he, of course, loves everybody and will let everybody in. His love doesn't work like that. For those of you who hate his love, his love doesn't work like that. For those of you who love his love in that way, his love doesn't work like that. How we know how his love works is how he showed his love. It says this in Romans 5 verse 8. God shows his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And that tells us something about God's love, which sets all our thinking aright. For those of you who hate God's love, you need to remember that God demonstrated, showed his love sacrificially by sending his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die on our behalf. He experienced the fullness of death, as we learned last week that we might have the hope of eternal life. He does not ignore this world that is experiencing all these trials and troubles. No, he entered into this world and experienced all the trials and troubles any human being could have experienced and then more as he died on the cross. And this verse also tells us that his love is not only sacrificial, but it is undeserved. Because while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So yes, God is love. But there is this other part about God that we need to remember alongside of that. And I could say loads of stuff, but let me also say this to you. That God is not only love, God is just. And those two things, they are not separated. They are actually together in his character and in his being, in who he is. God is love and God is just. Now, let me tell you this. All of us, we love justice. In this world, we like justice. We want good and right justice to take place. On the 11th of March this month, uh, Harvey Weinstein, was brought up for trial and he was sentenced to 23 years in prison. And the whole world seemingly celebrated because we felt justice has been done. Harvey Weinstein was accused of abusing over a hundred women in his lifetime as a Hollywood film producer caused much pain and heartache in many, many lives. And suddenly all these women who had been abused started to speak up and it formed what we know now today as the Me Too movement. And he came to court that day and he was sentenced to 23 years in prison. And we celebrate. Why? Because if what he has done is true, then that judgment is just. We love justice, except when justice comes knocking at our door. You see, in our lives, we must acknowledge that each one of us has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If God is perfect, if God is holy, if God is just, then you must see in your own life that you are not. You know, I see this in my own life right now in this isolation. If someone was to take this camera, I know it all looks fine here. This is because I've prepared it and, you know, I'm in a room and I've got, you know, this. But I'm in my kid's playroom. This is a very normal setting in a normal life. If this camera followed me not only now when I'm speaking from the Bible, but if this camera followed me around this whole past week, Do you know what you would see in my life? And I fully admit it. You would see that Shane Dean is a sinner. But my friend, if I was to take this camera and point it back at your life, 
I think all of us would see the very same thing, that you too are a sinner. And God's justice would demand that that sin be punished. Here is what it says about God's love and justice in this world. Exodus 34 verse 6 says this, puts them both together. The Lord was speaking, he says this, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin, yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. So there you have it, those two realities. Our God, our God is is loving, compassionate, gracious, slow to anger. Our God truly is love. And yet at the very same time, it tells us he will not let the guilty go unpunished. God is love and God is just. So how can God in his love and how can God in his justice forgive us? How can we be made right before God? There is one thing in this world where we see the perfect love and justice of the Lord and it is on the cross of Jesus Christ. It is there that we see his love and his justice meet. It is there that Jesus took the penalty for our sin and bore our sin on the cross. And we say, our God, you are loving and our God, you are just. Even as a Christian, you know, I've, I've asked myself um, this question, God, why did you do it? I know the Sunday school answer, right? But, but I, I want to ask the question, why did he do it? Why did he send his son to be born in in a stable and laid in an animal feeding trough? Why? Why did he send his son to take on our skin? Why did he allow him live this humble life? Why did he allow him get get beaten and flogged and and spat at, and a crown of thorns smashed into his head. Why did he allow him go through all of this? Why did God do that? Why did he allow the crowd cheer, crucify him, crucify him? Why did he not stop it? Why did he not stop it when all the crowd were mocking and and jeering at Jesus, saying, why won't your God save you now? Why didn't God save him? And like we were talking about last week when he was saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why did he forsake him? Why didn't he just take him off the cross? Why? We see the answer in our last verse of this morning, which says this. He, God, did it to demonstrate his justice so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. God did this to show his justice so that the right punishment for sin could be dealt with. And yet those who believe in Jesus could be free of all their sin. God is loving and God is just. And let me tell you, this is the story that has absolutely changed my life. I love this story. I love sharing it and telling it. This is why I get emotional now. Because this has changed my life forever. And I want every single person to know it. And I want all five or six of you, I don't know how many are watching, To know his love and his justice. And the only way you can know that is to put your faith and trust in him and experience the good news that God, our creator, has given us in Jesus. Let me pray. 
Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this good news. We thank you, Lord, that you are the creator, the sustainer of this world. And I pray for each one watching in right now. Lord, that you would help them know this truth, that they are created by you in your image, beautifully and wonderfully made, with beauty and responsibility. And Lord, that they might know and remember and feel your love and your justice. In your precious name, amen. So right now, what I'd like us to do is try something new. I'm going to put a song up here. It's a song by Sovereign Grace, and Sovereign Grace have graciously allowed churches to use their music um, through live stream. Uh, so that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the copyright up um, after this uh, video. But as I play this song, and as you reflect on the words of God and who he is, what I want you to do is, is just take this time to think about what has been said, and maybe just leave a comment and, and response. Maybe there's a verse that came to your mind. Maybe there's a question that came to your mind right now. Maybe there's a reflection that comes to your mind right now. Maybe you want to tell us where you're watching from and something that is confusing you about what is heard. And then after this song, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get up and we're going to have a chance to go through that together. So give me a chance to do this uh, smooth transition again here. Wait two moments. The song is by Sovereign Grace. It's called Oh Great God. Please do remember to um, leave us a comment or share a thought here. Okay, well, that is a wonderful song um, that I just love uh, singing in church. Um, hopefully one day we'll be able to sing it again um, when people are allowed to meet up again. Let me just take this time to um, look at some of your comments. If you do have any comments or thoughts or questions, um, I would love to 
uh, take that now, remembering right now that um, uh, some of this, uh, it actually, there's a, there's a 10 second time lag, so I mightn't see all your comments straight away um, immediately. Uh, but here we go. Oh, weird. I can see myself here now. Okay. Um, let's look at, look at um, some of this here together. Um, Tanya, great to have you here. Great that you can see um, everything that's going on. So, so delighted uh, to have you here, here with us. Let me see if I can click on to some of these um, comments. Um, Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Let me read that to you. Ephesians 3, uh, 20 to 21. Thank you, um, Wilbert and, and Becky, for, for bringing this up. I won't take too long uh, here, but it's just to um, have, have time with people just to share and see um, what we're thinking through and, and what the, the Lord is doing. So Ephesians, um, Ephesians, trying to find Ephesians, reading, singing the song in my head. <laughs> Ephesians 3, uh, verse 20 to 21, it says this, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we can ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. What a wonderful uh, scripture passage to share. Thank you so much. Yes, to him be the glory, our Lord, our God. What a wonderful King and Savior we serve. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And that is my prayer. That's why we're doing this series. I want every single one who hears the song to be able or hears the series to be able to say, to him be glory, not to me be glory, but to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Um, Andrew, you've asked if, if Christianity is true, would you become a Jesus believer? Well, Andrew, I know that you are a Jesus believer, um, but um, the reality of Christianity, I think, is indeed true. And if Christianity is true, then surely you have to become a believer in Jesus. If it is true that all of us have sinned, and fallen short of the glory of God, then we must do something about that if it is true. If it is true that God has created us in his image, right? Then it is surely true that we are accountable to him. That is why I believe many people don't want to believe that God created them. Because if they were to believe that to be true, then they would be accountable to him. And then they would have to follow the Savior, Jesus, in response um, to that. Now, Valerie um, responding here, God's love is not like our love. His love is so much greater. Yes, indeed, that is so true. His love is so much greater than our love, isn't it? Our love, it is, it is so fickle. We believe we can fall in and out of love. Um, I remember talking to a person before he, he had decided to leave his wife and he said, I'm, I'm just not in love anymore. God's love is so much greater than our love. He doesn't fall in and out of it. He loved the world that he gave his one and only son. He is consistent in all his character, in all his attributes, in his holiness, in his love, in his justice. He is consistent in all these things. Andrew, great, or uh, Alex, great to have you here. Uh, thanks for sharing and, and being with us. Wonderful to have you. Tanya as well. And um, thank you, Jesus, for his greatness. Um, Johnny, thank you for saying uh, thanks about the message and also Joshua 1.9. Yes, I remember Joshua 1.9. I don't know if you remember where we got that verse from, but um, Teen Street um, was where we got that verse from, if you will remember. That was an amazing um, time uh, together. And it says this, um, Colossians or Joshua 1.9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. 
You see, as Joshua was leading his people into the promised land, he had taken over from Moses, right? And so Joshua taking over from this great leader, Moses, how is that going to go? He's going to be afraid. He's going to be terrified. He's going to be discouraged going into this land that God has promised to give them. And yet God says to him, do not be afraid. I am going to be with you wherever you go. And this is a command that continues right the way throughout scripture that God is going to be with us. But what is amazing about this command that God is going to be with us. What is so amazing about this command. You can leave if you want. I don't mind. I'm just going to blab on here. What what is so amazing about God being with us in this world is he is not with us just in this good times. He is with us throughout the mess. And we see this theme of God with us, God God with Abraham, God with Joseph in his trials and in prison. And finally, we get that truth, don't we, in Matthew 1, where we are told that Emmanuel has come, God with us. And then finally, you know, in, in, in Matthew 28, God says, I will be with you wherever you go to the very end of the age. God never leaves us, never forsakes his people. He is always, always with us. Um, Yes, uh, Yanis, great to hear from you. Thank you for listening in uh, to the message. Um, Appreciate that. God bless you. Hope you guys are safe and doing well. Um, Something uh, from uh, Julia here I see. Um, what a what a what would a person need to become a Christian? What a person would need to become a Christian is simply this: faith and trust in Jesus. He justifies those who have faith in Him, and that is what God is calling you to do this morning. If you are still listening in, if you are remaining anonymous and not saying hi, that is perfectly fine. Um, But that is what God is calling you to do. Believe and trust in him with your whole heart. Give your whole life and everything you have over to him and him alone. Because he is the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And so we give all of that on to him. I want to see if I can see um, more of these comments. I'm missing um, some of them, so I can't quite see all of them. So I'm sorry if I haven't answered everything um, that everybody has said or said hi to everybody that has said hi. Um, Steve O'Brien, good to see you. Um, Yeah, you remember that first from Teen Street, all right, as well. Um, How great that God not only asks us, but commands us. Yes, that is so true, isn't it? Um, God not only asks us not to be afraid, very well put, but is calling us and commanding us uh, to do that as believers, trusting in him, obeying in him, obeying him, our one and only saviour. I think, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. For some reason, I cannot see all of the comments. I can see some of them as as they pop up, but not all of them. So thank you for spending um, this time with us. What I'm going to do um, right now is play another song for you and feel free uh, to leave uh, right now if you want or during this song if you want. I'm going to play this song out. And then we are going to end there. It is a song again by Sovereign Grace who have allowed us to play uh, their songs. It is called Behold Our God. And that is what I would love uh, you to do is behold, behold our God and trust in him.
Okay, we'll see you later, guys, okay? God bless you. Check up these songs if you want, okay? See you later. God bless. Have a good Sunday. Bye.